What if you had to reconsider everything you knew about the Crusades? Was it a holy war or a quest for power? The Crusades, a series of religious wars that spanned two centuries, have etched their mark in the annals of human history. The term crusade itself is derived from the Latin word crux or cross, symbolizing the Christian warrior's sacred vow to carry the cross to Jerusalem, the Holy Land. Picture, if you will, the late 11th century. Europe was a maelstrom of power struggles and societal upheavals. Amidst this tumult, Pope Urban II made a fiery proclamation at the Council of Clermont in 1095. He called upon the Knights of Christendom to embark on a holy pilgrimage, a crusade, to reclaim the sacred city of Jerusalem from Muslim rule. The Pope's impassioned plea ignited a fervor that swept across the continent, drawing thousands to take up the cross. But was this call to arms purely spiritual? Was it a quest for divine salvation, as the Pope professed, or were their underlying motives far more earthly? As we delve deeper into the annals of history, we find that beneath the veneer of religious duty, the Crusades were also a conduit for territorial expansion and power assertion. Kings, nobles, and adventurers alike saw in this holy war an opportunity to amass wealth, seize lands, and consolidate power. The promise of spiritual rewards was intertwined with the allure of worldly gains, creating a complex web of motives that propelled the Crusades. Yet the impact of these monumental conflicts extended beyond the battlefield. The Crusades not only reshaped the geopolitical landscape, but also catalyzed a cultural exchange between the Christian and Muslim worlds. They sparked a transfer of knowledge, ideas, and technology that would later pave the way for the Renaissance. So, as we embark on this journey through time, let us peel back the layers of history and explore the multifaceted legacy of the Crusades. Were they merely a holy war for spiritual liberation, or a quest for mortal power cloaked in the guise of divine will? Join us as we journey back in time to unravel the intricate tapestry of the Crusades. Imagine the year 1095. Pope Urban II makes an impassioned plea, calling for a crusade to reclaim the Holy Land. But was this call purely religious? In the late 11th century, Europe was a cauldron of religious fervor and socio-political turmoil. The Christian heartland was fragmented into squabbling kingdoms and fiefdoms, while the Muslim world, under the Seljuk Turks, had steadily encroached upon Byzantine territories. This was the backdrop against which Pope Urban II made his historic call to arms at the Council of Clermont. His fiery words painted a vivid picture of Christian suffering in the East and the sacred duty of Western knights to liberate the Holy Land. This call resonated deeply with a Europe steeped in religious piety. The promise of spiritual salvation was a potent motivator, driving thousands to take up the cross and march towards Jerusalem. Yet beneath this religious fervor, there were undertones of worldly ambition. The promise of plunder and the allure of new lands were tempting prospects for many knights and nobles. For the Pope and the Catholic Church, the Crusades offered a chance to unite Christendom under its banner and extend its influence. In the halls of power, the Holy War was also seen as a political chessboard, a strategic game of territorial acquisition and dominance. As the Crusaders embarked on their perilous journey, they were driven by a complex mix of motivations. Faith and the promise of heavenly rewards certainly played a pivotal role. But so did the lure of earthly riches, and the desire for power and prestige. In this intricate dance of religion and politics, the Crusades were not just a military expedition. They were also a social movement, an economic venture, and a religious pilgrimage all rolled into one. This multifaceted nature of the Crusades made them a phenomenon unlike any other in the annals of history. As thousands marched towards Jerusalem, the lines between faith and ambition began to blur. Beneath the banner of faith, a complex web of desires was being woven. The promise of land, wealth, and power lured many to the Holy Land. As we delve deeper into the heart of the Crusades, we begin to unravel the intricacies of human ambition that underpinned this epic of strife and transformation. The Crusades, initially framed as a holy pilgrimage, soon revealed a myriad of hidden motives. For kings and nobles, it was a means to consolidate power, expand territories, and gain prestige. They saw an opportunity to unite the Christian world under their leadership, and in doing so, secure their position in the power hierarchy of Europe. For the Knights, the Crusades were a path to glory and wealth. 
They were drawn to the allure of exotic lands, the spoils of war, and the promise of feudal estates. The prospect of combat was also an attractive lure, for it was through victorious battles that they could achieve renown and status. But it wasn't just the nobility who were enticed, many commoners too were seduced by the promise of a better life. The Crusades offered an escape from the hardships of serfdom, a chance to gain land and wealth, and a hope for social mobility. They were promised forgiveness of sins and spiritual rewards, but the earthly gains were just as compelling. Yet the Church also had its motives. The papacy sought to extend its spiritual and temporal power using the Crusades as a tool to strengthen its hold over the Christian world. The promise of spiritual salvation was a powerful weapon mobilizing thousands in the name of religion. As we peel back the layers of history we see that the Crusades were not just a battle between faiths but a complex interplay of personal ambitions, political machinations, and economic aspirations. The Holy Land was not just a spiritual destination but a prize in a grand game of power and wealth. The Crusades were more than a holy war, they were a stage for the grand play of power. As we move forward, we'll explore the human cost of these ambitions, the lives altered and lost in this monumental conflict. But what about those caught in the crossfire? The untold suffering of the common people is a tale often left untold. As we delve into this chapter of the Crusades, we must remember that the grandeur of knights and kings was built on the backs of those who bore the brunt of this holy war. The Crusades were not just a clash of kings and warriors, they were a clash of cultures, societies, and everyday lives. As the armies of the Cross and the Crescent clashed, cities were besieged, homes were razed, and the lives of countless innocents were forever altered. Imagine, if you will, the fear and uncertainty of a peasant family in the path of an advancing army. Their world, once confined to a simple plot of land, a small village suddenly thrust into the maelstrom of a conflict far beyond their understanding. Their homes became battlegrounds, their fields turned into encampments, their lives a grim testament to the human cost of war. The Crusades brought devastation in their wake. The siege of Jerusalem in the First Crusade resulted in the slaughter of thousands of its inhabitants. The sack of Constantinople during the Fourth Crusade led to the city being looted and burned, its treasures plundered, its people left destitute. Beyond the physical toll, there was also a profound psychological impact. Communities were torn apart, families separated, cultures irreversibly altered. The Crusades were not just a series of battles, they were a seismic event that shook the very foundations of medieval society. Yet amidst the horror, humanity persevered. Stories of resilience and courage emerged from the ashes. People rebuilt their lives, their communities. They clung onto hope, onto faith, onto the very essence of their humanity. Their spirit, their resilience is a testament to the indomitable will of the human spirit. The human cost of the Crusades is a stark reminder of the price of ambition, of the consequences of power wielded without restraint. It was the common people who paid the highest price for the dreams of the powerful. The echoes of their suffering still resonate in the annals of history. As we reflect on the Crusades, let us not forget the people who lived, suffered, and persevered in those tumultuous times. Their stories are a poignant reminder of the human cost of war, a cost that reverberates through the centuries and challenges us to learn from the past. The Crusades left an indelible mark on the world, shaping modern geopolitics and religious relations. This chapter of human history is not confined to dusty books and ancient manuscripts, but is alive and pulsating in the veins of the present day. Let's delve into the lasting impact of these monumental conflicts. The Crusades, in essence, were a clash of civilizations, a collision between the Christian West and the Muslim East. This epical struggle cast a long shadow, shaping the contours of the modern Middle East and the way these two worlds interact. Even today, echoes of the Crusades can be heard in contemporary conflicts and tensions. Yet the Crusades were not just about division and discord. They also sparked interactions that had profound effects on the world. They led to an unprecedented exchange of knowledge, culture, and technology, stimulating intellectual growth in the West and laying the groundwork for the Renaissance. The Crusades, paradoxically, were both a force of destruction and a catalyst for progress. The Crusades also had a profound impact on the social fabric of medieval Europe. They shattered feudal structures, consolidated monarchies, and opened up new avenues of trade and commerce.
They changed the way people saw the world, inspiring a sense of adventure and exploration that would eventually lead to the Age of Discovery. Furthermore, the Crusades influenced the development of military tactics, architecture, and even medical science. Castles constructed by the Crusaders stand as enduring testaments to their architectural prowess, while their advancements in battlefield medicine laid the foundations for modern trauma care. But perhaps the most enduring legacy of the Crusades is the way they have shaped our understanding of holy war and the relationship between religion and power. They serve as a stark reminder of how spiritual beliefs can be manipulated for earthly gains, a lesson that remains relevant in our contemporary world. As the dust settled, the legacy of the Crusades continues to influence our world today. They are a mirror reflecting the best and worst of human nature, our capacity for faith and courage, our thirst for power and conquest, and our ability to learn, adapt, and grow. As we gaze into this mirror, we are challenged to learn from our past, to navigate the present, and to shape a better future.